ओके वेरी गुड गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो वेलकम बैक टू द फिफ्थ क्लास सो होप इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड द डायग्राम व्हिच वाज रिलेटेड टू द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर रिलेट फॉर द डेरिवेशन ऑफ अ रिलेशन व्हिच गिव्स अ रिलेशन बिटवीन द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स एंड ऑब्जेक्ट डिस्टेंस u यूएस डिस्टेंस b एंड आल्सो आवर रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर कैपिटल r so my dear students now i am just going to do the same here so i am going to write the diagram again so i am just going to uh, derive the relationship between n u v and r so i am not going to write the heading again so because uh, i have to write the diagram i have to derive it so i need to complete the board for the derivation so dear students instead i have written the diagram so i explain it also even i am going to write it again so i am going to write an aperture right this is the center of the sphere or it is called a center of curvature but as this is a hole so from the hole and the center of curvature the line i am going to draw that is said to be the principal axis but as this is a air medium called as a rare medium with the refractive index n is equal to 1 And for us, it is a glass medium. This is our refractive index y. So the distance between pole and the center of curvature is the radius of curvature r. And I am going to take an object O, which is at a distance of u from the pole. Now, I am going to incident a ray of light with an angle of alpha, so that at the point of incidence, I am going to draw the normal, right? For us, this I am going to view the thing as y. So I am just going to draw the angle. So with an angle of incidence, I. So the ray of light is traveling from the ray to the denser medium. So it reflects towards the normal and from the image at this position. The distance between the pole and the image called as image distance represented by v. So then this angle is termed as beta and this angle is considered as gamma. So these are all the things we just we just. Written in the previous class, and even I just give the values of what is O P, what is P C, and what is uh, is uh, C I and all right. So all those values I have given. I am going to write the same thing again, my dear students. So here I am just going to note it down. O P is equal to the object distance U, and P C is equal to what I said. I am going to be written it as the C sorry P I is equal to V, right? But it is a normal angle of incidence and not a angle of refraction. I am going to derive it now. So by using Snell's law, we know that according to Snell's law, according to Snell's law, according to Snell's law, we can write it as n one sin i is equal to n two sin i. Right? The students here, if I consider that the parallel beam of light is going to incident. Parallel beam of light is going to incident on this refracting surface. Assume that if the parallel beam of light is going to incident on this refracting surface, what happens? This angles, the angle of refraction, angle of incidence, all becomes very very small. So that rather than writing sine i, I can write it as i, and so rather rather than writing sine r, I can write it as r. So for parallel rays. For parallel rays, parallel rays, sine i is nearly equal to i, and sine r is nearly equal to r. So what happens now? So it can be written as n one i is equal to n two r. This is the equation number one. Dear students, from this equation, I want to calculate what is i, and also I want to calculate what is r. To calculate angle I and also to calculate the value of R, I am using the different triangles from the diagram. You can observe it carefully. To calculate I, I am using O, Y, C. See, I am using O, C, Y triangle. See, from from triangle O, C, Y. See, you know that from the mathematics. Sum of two interior angles is equal to exterior angle. Sum of two interior angle is equal to exterior angle. So here the exterior angle is I. Interior 
here I will use alpha and gamma. So what is I? I can written as I is equal to alpha plus gamma. Similarly, I want to calculate R. So to calculate R, I am using I C I C N. I am going to use I C N. Repeat it again. I am using I C N. So from the triangle, from the triangle I C N. See again, exterior angle is equal to sum of two interior angle. Which one is the exterior angle in this triangle? N I C. So gamma is the exterior angle and R and beta are the interior angles. So gamma is equal to R plus beta. But I want to calculate R so that R can be written as R can be written as gamma minus beta. So we calculated I and R. Let us substitute. Let us substitute. Substitute I and R in equation one. What will happen? Let us see. N one into what is I? Alpha plus gamma is equal to N two into what is R? R is gamma minus beta, right? Now let us <coughs> multiply this. So it becomes N one into alpha. That is N one alpha plus N one into gamma is N one gamma is equal to now N two into gamma. N two into gamma minus N two into beta, right? Dear students, I want to take gamma terms to the one side, so I am going to shift these two terms, interchange in the terms, so it becomes N one alpha minus N two beta. If it shift to this side, it becomes plus N two beta is equal to here we have N two gamma and this minus term. If I shift here, it becomes minus N one gamma, right? So here gamma is common, so N one alpha plus N two beta is equal to take gamma outside, gamma into N two minus N one. Take it as equation number two. Dear students, now in the equation two, we don't know the value of alpha, we don't know the value of beta, and also we don't know the value of gamma. Let us move towards the calculation of alpha, beta, and gamma. Dear students. To calculate alpha, beta, and gamma, <coughs> again I want to move towards the assumption of. Again I want to move towards the assumption of paraxial rays. Suppose if I consider that for paraxial rays, for paraxial rays, what happens? This N is near to P. N is very close to P. So for paraxial rays, N is very close to P. So if N is very close to P. So N P becomes a straight line. I'm repeating again. I'm repeating again. So for paraxial rays, N becomes very close to P. If N is very close to P, so it becomes a straight line, right? So it becomes a straight line. So then I can write N P as a straight line, dear students. So N P as a straight line. So for paraxial rays, you should write this condition for <coughs> paraxial rays. N is close to P, so N P becomes straight line then. Now I am using the three triangles to calculate alpha, beta, and gamma. Now let us move for the calculation of alpha first. To calculate alpha, I am using the triangle O N P, right? So from the triangle O P N, from the triangle O P N. As we are simply can say N O P from triangle N O P. You can observe that I am using tan alpha here. So as this becomes opposite, this is adjacent and this one is hypotenuse. So this is opposite. If it is a straight line, if I consider this as a straight line, so it becomes a right angle. So this is an opposite side, this is adjacent, and this becomes hypotenuse side. So my dear students, tan alpha. How to write the tan alpha? Tan alpha is equal to C L opposite by adjacent. That is P N by O P. P N by O P. Similarly, I am using two other triangles to define. So from 
Rango. Yes. Yan po P. So now, I'm using Yan I P. I'm using the triangle. Yan I P. Right? So P N becomes opposite side. P I becomes P I becomes adjacent side. Yan I becomes I coordinates side. I'm using Yan I P triangle now. From the triangle, Yan I P. So tan beta is equal to P N by IP. PN by IP. So all the distances should be measured from P. So it should be written as PO and PN. Not OP. OP are the way from because all the distances should be measured from pole. Next, the last one is LCP. So as PN is uh, opposite, PC is adjacent. So from the triangle, LCP. So tan gamma can be written as tan gamma can be written as. P and by PC. Please be careful for paraxial is tan alpha is equal to alpha, tan beta is equal to beta, and tan gamma is equal to gamma. So I got alpha, beta, and gamma values taken as equation number 3. Let us put equation 3 in equation 2. Right, so now let us see what will happen. So here it is equation 2, n1, what is alpha? Alpha is Pn divided by Po, right? Plus, here it is n2 into beta, what is beta? Pn by Pi equals, what is gamma here? Gamma is Pn by Pc into N2 minus N1. Right. So I just want to rub the board. So I need this diagram also. I'll just rub it here. Okay. Here I am tightening the again. So I have N. So as Pn is common on both sides. So Pn I am going to cancel. Remaining is N1 by PO plus N2 by PI is equal to N2 minus N1 divided by PC. What is PO? It's U. What is PC? It's R. What is PI? It's V. Let us substitute it. So dear students, N1 by PO is U plus N2 by PI is V. This is equal to N2 minus N1 divided by PC is R. But one thing, we should apply the sign convention. See, all the distances which are measured along the direction of incident ray is taken as positive. And the distances which are measured opposite to the direction of incident ray is taken as negative. Here, our ray of light is moving in this direction. So that the radius of curvature and the image distance are measured along the direction of incident ray. So that V and R becomes plus. Whereas the object distance is minus. Why? Because the incident ray is in this way. Whereas I am measuring the object distance in the opposite direction of incident ray. So that PO is equal to minus U. So dear students, now with the help of sign convention, here it becomes minus U. So we are in it to get it in a new format. N2 by V minus N1 by U is equal to N2 minus N1 divided by R. So this is the general expression which gives you, which gives you the relationship between the image distance V, object distance U, radius of curvature and the refractive index. Dear students, we can observe that N2, this is said to be N2 is equal to N, this is the N1. See here, N2 is the refractive index of a medium where the image is formed. So that I can write it as refractive index of image space divided by C. Here I will not get the space to write the complete thing. So one thing I will do, I will write it in the next. But before that, let us observe one thing. So almost all you dear students, what you will do, you know. Just, ask, uh, just remember that in this derivation what we did, we consider the Snell's law, n1 sin is equal to n2 sin 1. 
So in that, we get to know that for paraxial risk, sin i is nearly equal to i and sin r is nearly equal to r and we substituted it. We should calculate i and r by using the rank rules. So while calculating, after calculating uh, i and r, now then let's be removed towards the calculation of alpha, beta and gamma. Don't confuse with alpha, beta and gamma, it's very easy. Why because? Why because? This is common for all the triangles. Once you use the object to calculate alpha, once you use the image to calculate beta, once you use the C for calculation of gamma. Even if you forget, if you know one thing, then you can easily write others. So, no need to write the triangles and all. From the figure, tan alpha can be written as Pn by Pn. Similarly, tan beta is here it is Pn, right? Pn. So, here it is O, just replace it by I. Here it is I, so replace it by C for gamma. So, likewise, you can easily solve. So, don't go with that for that. But suppose if you have it, then you can easily write this. So, there are likewise we solve here. So, let us see how to write the general format for this formula. This is the relationship by applying the sign convention. So, without applying the sign convention also, we can just write the, the formula. That general formula is exactly required for the derivation of lens makers formula, dear students. We can observe that N2 is a refractive index of medium. Which medium? It is a medium for object. So it means N2 is a refractive index for a medium where the image is formed. So that I am going to write it as refractive index of image space. Refractive index of image space divided by right. Still I want it space to come to the right complete thing. So that this is the right. Refractive index of image space divided by what is V? It is an image distance. It is said to be image distance. See, I am not going to write minus because I am not going to apply any sign conversion now. Because here I just use the convex spherical refracting surface for my derivation. Even you can use the concave refracting surface for the derivation also. So by that time we should not write exactly this minus or uh, this formula for concave because there the sign convention will obviously change us. So now let us see, I am just going to write it as generally general formula as plus before applying the sign convention. What is N1? N1 is a refractive index of a medium where the object is present. N1 is a refractive index of the medium where the object is present. So I am going to write it as refractive index of object space. Refractive index of object space divided by. So what is U? U is object distance. U is object distance. Right. of the medium where the object is present. So simply I can write it as difference of in refractive index. Difference in refractive index divided by R. R is radius of curvature. Whereas this is a general formula which we use actually for the calculation or given for the derivation of uh, lens makers formula. Hope you got the derivation. So this is one of the important derivation. That you should uh, lie very carefully. Okay. With this, now let us move towards the discussion of lens. Dear students, when we come towards a lens, so we are very much familiar with this lens, right? So, what is lens? What is lens? When we come towards the discussion of the lens concept, we are very much familiar that nowadays we are all using the lenses, right? So, whereas one lens is exactly, uh, it may be the concave and other lens may be the convex. So, we have different types of lenses. We have a different types of lenses. 
So before going towards different types of lenses and also the image formation by those lenses, we should know what is lens. Dear students, lens is an optical medium. It is an optical medium which is bounded by which is bounded by two surfaces with at least one surface is curved yes why am going to call the lens as an optical medium why because the lens shows the phenomenon of refraction lens shows, shows the phenomenon of light so that I can say that lens is an optical medium which shows the phenomenon of light it is said to be which shows the phenomenon of refraction dear students Lens, the definition for a lens is like this. It is an optical medium which is bounded by two surfaces but at least one should be the curved surface. One day I will tell exactly curved surface are right there. Then, here we have, I just give on the definition of a lens. So then my dear students, I am just, uh, I just want to write the different types of lenses. One is biconvex lens. So this is said to be the biconvex lens. The second one is uh, biconcave lens. Next is uh, plano convex lens. The third next one is plano concave lens. Lens makers formula. 
So now let us see how the convex lens is going to form the image and also let us discuss some of the terminologies related to the convex lens and also the terminologies related to the concave lens. Dear yes, students, I am going to write the convex lens now, right? So as we have the two surfaces here, this is one surface. One convex surface, right? Whereas this is a second convex surface, right? Two surfaces we have. Let us give the name as X, Y. See, this this X, Y is said to be the aperture. Why? Because these two surfaces are going to refract the incident beam of light. As well as observe it carefully. Here we have the air medium, here also we have the air medium. So that the refractive index is equal to 1. Here also the refractive index is equal to 1. But whereas it here is a glass cleaner with refractive index n. Now the, the, the lenses which are having two surfaces, so I'm just going to extend it. I'm just going to extend this. So I get a circle here, I get a sphere, and I'm going to extend the surface. Again, I'm going to get another one sphere. That means lens is the one, so you can observe, which is having two surfaces, right? So in the middle of this, we have an optic center. Let us define it afterwards. Whereas this is for the first surface, it is written as C1. The distance between the optic center and the C1 is called as radius of curvature, represented as R1. Similarly, for the second surface, this is the center of curvature, represented as C2. The distance between the optic center and the C2 is called as radius of curvature, represented as R2. You can observe my dear students, for the lens, we have two first surfaces, so that we have the two radius of curvature and two center of curvature. Even we can see the two principal focus and two focal length also. So suppose if I just incident a parallel beam of light, so you can observe the parallel beam of light is going to incident on the surface. So after refraction, it passes through the principal focus. This is said to be the principal focus F1. So they are going to refract in this way. Then the distance between the optic center and the principal focus is called as focal length represented by F1. Hope you are getting my dear students. I just incident a parallel beam of light. So those are the light, parallel beam of light are parallel to the principal axis. When a parallel beam of light is going to incident, it refracts and passes through the principal focus. So we have n number of uh, terms here. So now let us define one by one. Now let us define one by one. What is optic center? What is optic center? See, optic center is a point lies inside the lens on the principal axis. Optic center is a point lies inside the lens on the principal axis. This is a simple definition. But how to define it in a very peculiar way? That also a right definition, but how to define it in a peculiar way? I'll just show you here. I'll just show you here. See, this is said to be the optic center, right? This is said to be the optic center. If I just Yes, if a ray of light is going to incident uh, in this way on one of the surfaces of the convex lens, or suppose uh, from first surface it suffers a refraction and it bends towards optic center, then after the refraction from the next surface it emerges or it emerges or to the direction of incident ray. So you can observe optic center is a point, whereas after refraction, so after refraction the emergent ray is parallel to the 
direction of incident ray. So you can define the dot fixed centers of point in a uh, light inside the lens on the principal axis, right? So optic center is a one when the ray of light uh, refracts through the optic center, it emerges out parallel to the direction of incident ray. As well as suppose if I consider thin lens, if I consider thin lens, you can ask what is a thin lens? The thickness of the lens is very very less. The lens which is having a thickness which is very very small compared to that of radius of curvature. I am repeating again. Write down it. Take down the definition for the thin lens. Thin lens is a lens whose thickness is very very negligible compared to that of the radius of curvature. Hope you written the definition for the thin lens. So I am repeating again. Whose thickness is very very negligible compared to that of the radius of curvature. Then for the thin lens, how to define the optic center? Serious thin lens. Optic center is a point in case of thin lens. So whereas in case of thin lens, optic center is a point lies inside the lens on the principal axis. But but for the thin lens, so when the ray of light passes through the optic center, it does not undergo refraction. It passes as it is. It does not undergo refraction. So you should know how actually this terminology is going to be defined by the help of diagrams. Now let us define what is principal focus. So now let us see what is principal focus. Principal focus. Principal focus. It is represented by the symbol capital F. What is a principal focus? It is a point. It is a point on either side of the lens. Because if rays incident by incident are incidentally focus at the moment. So principal focus is a point on either side of the lens on the principal axis. So this point is lying on the principal axis. When it is lying on either side of the lens, right? On the principal axis at which rays of light meet after refraction when the parallel beam of light is going to fall on the lens. So I am repeating again. So this is for convex lens itself. See, principal focus is a point on either side of the lens on the principal focus. So when parallel beam of light incident on the lens, so they refract, they meet at a point or they appear to diverge from a point after refraction. So I use two different definitions here. See I am repeating again. So it is a point on either side of the lens on the principal axis. So at which the parallel rays, at which the parallel rays, hope you are writing, at which the parallel rays after refraction meet at this point or uh, appears to diverge from the point. Why I am saying appears to diverge? Let us see the diagram for the convex lens also, for the concave lens also. So there is concave lens. So here it is having an optic center, right? So now, so here it is also having two surfaces. It is also having two center of curvature, C2. So C1 here. Because this first surface and second surface, C2, this is R2, this is R1. Similarly, it is having the principal focus F1 and principal focus F2. See here, if I instead a parallel beam of light, I just want to run this radius of curvature to just explain you very clearly. So, rays of light will be data. So, after refraction, this concave surface diverges the incident beam of light. So then where the image is formed, it appears to diverge from principal focus. It appears to diverge from principal focus. So I use the word principal focus, the point on either side of the lens on the principal axis at which the parallel beam of light after refraction meet or appears to diverge from the point. It is a general definition for the principal focus but combining for convex and concave lens identity. So that is said to be the principal focus. Then what is focal length? Focal length is represented by the symbol small f. Whereas 
the distance between optic center and the principal focus is called as focal length the distance between the optic center and the center of curvature is called the radius of curvature whereas for convex lens we have two radius of curvature as well as for the concave lens we have two radius of curvature so now almost all we discuss the terminologies related to the concave and also the convex lens now let us see the sign conventions which are used
डिस्टेंस इज ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टन एज नेगेटिव इफ इन योर माइंड व्हाट इज रियल ऑब्जेक्ट एंड रियल इमेज आई जस्ट शो यू सो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर रिफ्रैक्शन विद द रेज ऑफ लाइट आर गोइंग टू मीट एग्जैक्टली द सिंगल पॉइंट देन यू कैन से दैट द रियल इमेज इज फॉर्म कीप इन योर माइंड व्हेन द रियल इमेज इज फॉर्म ऑलवेज इट्स इट इज सेड टू बी इनवर्टेड सो प्लीज डोंट फॉरगेट इफ देयर इज अ इनवर्टेड इमेज इट्स सेड टू बी रियल इमेज If there is a real, you can say that it is inverted. No need to worry about it. So then, suppose the ray of light are not going to meet exactly at a point. For example, convex, sorry, concave lens. So in case of concave lens, you can observe that the parallel beam of light are going to undergo the refraction. So in this way. So but these two rays are diverging rays. The diverging rays never meet each other. So that if I extend. these two rays see these two rays are not exactly meeting at a point so this this is said to be because these are not meeting at a point it is appears to diverge from this point so this kind of rays is not going to meet exactly at a point is said to be the virtual so these rays the rays which never meet exactly at a point always forms virtual image so if it is virtual so always we get correct correct means right as it is object strike by the image for strike by the that so inverted and the object strike by the image inverted by the ulta by the that so if it is real it is inverted if it is virtual it should be always correct keep in your mind and see you can observe the object is exactly above the principal axis and here the image is below the principal axis right now the next sign convention is the distances measured above the principal axis above the principal axis is positive and below the principal axis is negative so if i want to measure the height of the object it is above the principal axis so it is taken as positive if i want to measure the height of a image so it is below the principal axis it is taken as negative so finally we have four sign conventions so hope you got all these sign conventions so that all the distances should always be measured from the optic center and the distances always should be measured from along the direction of incident ray they are taken as positive suppose if we measure the distances opposite the direction of incident ray it is taken as negative and the real object in the real image is positive and the virtual object in the virtual image is also taken as negative and the last thing is the distances which are measured uh, above the principal axis is positive and the distances which are measured below the principal axis is taken as negative this is all about uh, uh, some of the introduction towards the lenses how actually uh, the lens is going to form an image and also how we should calculate the different distances in case of lens now my dear students now let us move towards the derivation of expression for lens maker formula so dear students today i will just show you the diagram for the lens maker formula so that in the next class let us we can move for or uh, the derivation of the lens maker formula so for deriving the lens maker formula i can consider the convex lens or even i can consider the concave lens but if i consider the concave lens there the sign conventions changes whereas if i use a convex lens the sign convention changes but in case of concave lens we will get the virtual images as well as we will get uh, uh, the the object and the image systems opposite to the direction of uh, the incident ray right? so by that time we need to uh, substitute a minus sign a lot of times which gives a lot of confusion for us so just what i'm going to do now i'm just going to use the convex lens for the derivation which helps us easier the derivation of steps so just i'm going to consider the convex lens so i'm going to write the principal axis which is having an optic center whereas it is having an aperture set to be x y so you can observe that it is having two different surfaces whereas here we have air medium here also we have the air medium and here it is gas medium with a refractive index y see i am using i am going to place an object o right i am going to place an object o so whereas 
the distance between the optic center the distance between the optic center and the object is called as object distance represented by u now my dear students now uh, see what will happen assume that here i have the two surfaces assume that the second surface is absent it means the second surface is absent second surface is not assume my body so now the ray of light from the object is going to incide on the first surface so after this at this point it undergoes a refraction assume that the second surface is absent so if the second surface is absent the first surface is going to form the image the first surface is going to form the image at this position so it is said to be i dash so the distance between this optic center and the i1 is said to be the image distance v1 o is the object for the first surface i1 is the image for the first surface now assume that the second surface is present and the first surface is absent assume that the second surface is present and the first surface is absent it means i1 is the object for second surface i1 is the object for the second surface so after refraction after refraction so the second surface forms an image i that is what the distance between optic center and the image final image i is said to be image distance represented by b yes students i am representing again i am not i am not just explaining it again so here we have two surfaces at first assume the object, second surface is absent so that i got an image i1 it means o is the object uh, for the first surface and i1 is the image for the first surface then for the second surface assume that the first surface is absent then i1 will become an object for second first surface remember this is an object for second surface but this is not the real object this is a virtual object this has to be the virtual object because the real object is here real object is here this is the image formed by first surface but this image formed by the first surface acts as an object for second surface so that object is said to be the virtual object for second surface then the second surface forms the real final image at i that is with the distance of v so this is a diagram for uh, deriving the lens makers formula so let us derive the formula in the next class so don't forget to write the notes dear students by the time when you are going to listen the class by the time you just note down the points and if you want to include some other points or if you want to write some other definitions that you are not uh, able to write while you are reading in the class so just you can uh, refer the pdf and you can write notes thank you